Toby Moma, the host on Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby. What a pleasure, what an honor to invite you to watch our show this week. We have the Honorable Patrick Jefferson, the State House of Representative member for District 11 in the state of Louisiana. Patrick is a father, he's a husband. Patrick is a lawyer, he's an attorney. Patrick is a son. Uh, Patrick is a brother. Patrick is a Christian. He's a chairman of the deacons board in his church. He's a Christ follower. And he's, he's a firm believer in faith and family. I want you to listen to what he has to say. Patrick Jefferson, he studied in um, Dillard's University for his undergrad and then went on to Ohio State University for his um, JD. He's, he's been practicing for more than 20 years now. And he's going to be sharing his heart on family, faith, and the future. You don't want to miss it. He has some nuggets that even the young ones will find inspiring. Don't miss Patrick Jefferson on this show. God bless you. Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness, thank you for joining us on the show today. We have a remarkable guest, Honorable Patrick Jefferson, is a uh, representative for the city of the S District 7 in the state of Louisiana, and he's going to be with us talking about his life, his passion, his commitment to Jesus and family, and where God has brought him this past 50 plus years. I've known Patrick for uh, close to s almost 10 years plus years. I, saw him, I met him in 2010, and he's been a remarkable fellow whose love for Jesus has never wavered. And it's an honor and it's a privilege to have him with us on the show today. Thank you so much, Honorable Thank Patrick. You, what a pleasure. What an honor. The wow. pleasure is all mine. So you, you are the district representative for seven, is that what it's called? District 11. District 11, okay, in the state of Louisiana. What does that part encompass? What cities of the compass of it encompasses the entirety of Claiborne Parish, okay. a portion of Lincoln Parish, and a portion of Bienville Parish. Mm. Um, Gramlin State University is within my district. Okay. And you've been in the house since 2011. That's correct. Okay. I mean, some of your constituents are watching because this show goes all the way to Acadia. So I wanted to ask you what in the last 10 years have, I mean, have you been able to achieve being in the House of Representatives over for this for this constituents that you have currently. Good question. Uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, we've gone from deficits to now we have a surplus, and yet the challenges are looming now because, depending on what transpires uh, with this administration, who's had such great synergy and energy in taking the state uh, to heights unknown, uh, but the, the key part has been education. Okay. We've tried to ensure uh, that institutions like Gramlin State University, like Louisiana Tech, uh, have been given all of the resources they need mm. uh, because we know that education is so, so important. essential mm. uh, and it gives all individuals, irrespective of socioeconomic uh, background, uh, political status, uh, economic status, it gives them an opportunity uh, mm. to achieve. And so we've tried to do uh, great things to ensure uh, that Gremlin and, and Louisiana Tech have been given all of the, the essential tools they need uh, to be successful. And uh, I'm glad to say that we've been able to usher in uh, a great leader uh, at Gremlin State University uh, because Gremlin not only means so much to my district and to the state, but it means so much to the world. Right. Uh, in addition, we've been able to, to look at and, and be a part of various things as it relates uh, to criminal justice reform. Uh, but yet, uh, when you look at all that's going on right now in our society, uh, in our orbit, uh, as the young people would say, uh, the challenges are, are, are large. Uh, there have been many defeats along the way. Uh, haven't been able to increase uh, the living wage uh, so that individuals uh, doing this course I was able to serve as chair of labor. Uh, and yet, uh, that was one of the things that I really uh, was not able uh, to accomplish. Uh, but we've continued to, to bring uh, about uh, 
that piece of legislation, uh, trying to ensure that everyone has a right uh, and an equal uh, access, as well as the rights of women. Wow. But it's been a great ride. Yeah. Uh, met some wonderful people. Uh, the constituents of District 11 are just the greatest uh, this side of heaven. And uh, I've been tried to be accessible. I've tried to keep them informed, and I've tried to be uh, their mouthpiece uh, mm -hmm. in Baton Rouge. Well, you recently received an award in the House of Representatives from your colleagues. Um, I don't know if the constituents know that, but I want to just elaborate on what that award was for. Well, in a, it's in a country that is so bi that is so <laughs> divided, and let me use the word divisive. Yes. I think it's interesting that you got an award from both sides of the aisle. Yes, it's called the Doc Hudson Award, and if I tell you I was surprised uh, beyond measure, um, it's basically a, a gentleman's award, a general person award. That individual who every day, notwithstanding the divisive nature that you just mentioned, notwithstanding party politics, notwithstanding um, ideas and what have you, goes about in such a way that he or she garners the respect of both sides, Republicans, Democrats, as well as independents. So I was definitely uh, surprised and humble because every day um, when I go to work, every day when I represent District 11, uh, I take with me my faith, I take with me all of the things that I have been taught, uh, and I take with me every constituent in mm -hmm. District 11. And so to be recognized uh, by my colleagues, I truly cannot but say, to God be the glory. Praise God. Now, where did all this start? This all started in Arcadia? Arcadia, Louisiana. Louisiana. Okay. Give us a background of your home environment growing up. I mean, just in a nutshell, because you're talking to some 21-year-old guy who's divided between college and he feels the world has not been fair to him. And Born and raised by a single parent, a wonderful mother in Arcadia, Louisiana, who every day and every summer poured into me the possibilities and how we could or I could do anything if I trust God and I put my mind to it. My mother, uh, who herself is a trailblazer, uh, she has been such a great sacrifice and a great inspiration. But along with her was my grandmother, uh, the late Beatrice Jefferson Hill, who there was nothing I needed. Uh, we did not have transportation, so when it was time to go various places, off to school, we had to rely on relatives and friends. Mm -hmm. So this um, supplanted within me uh, the need that we can't do whatever we're trying to do by ourselves. Uh, we are tied, interconnected, and interrelated to so many people. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got my start. Uh, and again, my life, although you mentioned 50 plus, it's still a work in progress, but it's all started in Arcadia, and it all started in my home church, Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church, uh, and the rest is an ongoing project. So you went through Arcadia High School, Dillard's, Ohio State. I was looking through your resume. You never took a year off. You never... I don't know if you wandered out or, you know, how kids not at all. today say they want to find not themselves. At all. It's not common it, it's, to just find somebody go, like, from high school all the way to become a, a JD, a lawyer. Higher possibilities. It was, you know, on my way over here today, I was speaking with my wife, and I was saying to her, life is about choices. Mm. Uh, and you're right. We can take time off or we can carpe diem seize the day mm -hmm. and that's what my mother poured into me oh, wow. whether it was uh, at a program at Gramlin, Upward Bound, Louisiana Tech, whether it was a program uh, at the local high school uh, in Washington DC as a Senate page for the late Russell B. Long, uh, it was always uh, a strive to realize and to appreciate that there was a world outside of the great city of Arcadia, Louisiana, oh, wow. and the great state of Louisiana. So I, I had a, this yearning just to see. Mm -hmm. And in addition, it was, it was work, 
but I also had fun because I've met people uh, from all across this nation, and even today, we are still friends, and that has meant the world to me. Now, you came into high school when there was integration. That's correct. Elementary, was it integrated? That's correct. Okay, so you grew up with Caucasians, African Americans. I mean, you, you, you had a good mixture in the high school system. Right, right. High, in the, in the, in, I'm sure in Ohio State it was a good mixture, too. That's correct. Wow, so impressive. Arcadia is a maybe 5,000 people? Uh, not quite five. Oh, wow. But, uh, you know, a little, a little over 3,000, if I'm not mistaken. And out of that comes Patrick Jefferson, a lawyer out of Ohio State. I mean, that's a, man, that's a major feat. I mean, some young kids are watching it. They're like, how did you get that far? How did you achieve that goal? How did you, I mean, with, and I'm raising this issue here with a single parent because that's what a lot of kids are saying. I don't think I can do what you're doing if my mom is single and can't pay my fees and I don't have someone else to, to support me. That's what they're saying out there. I don't know what you want to respond to well, those young boys out there. And when when Secretary uh, Hillary Rodden Clinton stated many years ago, it takes a village, mm. we knew that that was correct before she articulated that because I had a great and I have a great mother. I had a great grandmother, mm. but I had so many other individuals, uh, principals and, and teachers, uh, Sunday school teachers, pastors wow. uh, who assisted, who encouraged. That was a lady uh, in my life and in the lives of so many in the Arcadia, Bienville Parish uh, area. Her name is the late uh, Annie Ruth Johnson. Mm -hmm. And wherever I went, she would always send me a card of encouragement. She was also a teacher. Wow. And what she was known for, besides her great personality and her meek spirit and beautiful spirit, notwithstanding who you were, and I don't know how she did it, she would send birthday cards to everyone. Wow. Or sympathy cards or get well cards. And how she remembered all of these individuals' uh, names, and she passed away recently, uh, is just mind-boggling. Wow. And uh, so that's an example of wow. how... You don't necessarily have to be a doctor like you, Dr. Toby, or be able to practice law. We have all been called to do something mm -hmm. to make this world a little better. We found it this way. So our challenge and responsibility, and I say to the youth, do what you have been called to do. Right. Make this world a little better and pour into the lives of others. And the good thing is, once you do that, mm -hmm. It'll come back. Usually right. you, get more you get more than what you put in. A seed, is, a seed sown is a harvest That's correct. that comes back in the future. Your seed never leaves your life. It goes into your future to create your future. And, and, and we live at a time where many of our young people, not all, but many, they're so instantaneous. You want it right then and there. But I want to encourage you uh, this afternoon. I want to encourage you wherever you are to continue to sow, to continue to, to toil, to continue uh, to till, to continue mm. to strive uh, because uh, you may not get, as Dr. King alluded, we may not all be called, like yourself, Dr. Toby, to do the great things, but whatever we have been called to do it, mm -hmm. do it in a big way. Do it in a big so way. that's what I want to encourage our youth, if they are listening today, is to whatever it is, mm -hmm. do your job so well, do that call so well, that the living, the born, or the dead could not do it any better than you. And Mother Teresa said, you know, we said you can show love in a little way that makes a big difference. Big so difference. That's, that's correct. That's what it's all about. That's correct. Talk to me about your transition from high school to college. Why I say this is because I know we've been having a lot of statistics in the state of Louisiana with kids not finishing college. I think there's a 30 or 40 percent dropout rate in Grambling and other schools, kids who start and never finish. Um, what is, I mean, what made you persist through Dillard? I mean, how did you transition from high school? Was there a financial obstacle you had to overcome? I mean, you left home literally for the first time right. to go to New Orleans. And some people think New Orleans is a negative influence. Obviously, it's not on everybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
So was there a was there a ch culture shock? Was there a change in circumstance financially with you having to take care of yourself in New Orleans? Well, again, I always had that support okay. back in Arcadia. Wow. Notwithstanding, I could call my mom, uh, and if we had to vie for loans or what have you, she was game. Wow. She was willing because she could see the bigger picture mm. when I perhaps became a bit weary or frustrated. And she was the motivation. She was the wind beneath those mm. wings. Mm. Uh, and it was not easy. Uh, Dillard, unlike Gremlin and Tech, is a private institution. Right. So the tuition there is uh, much higher. Much higher. <laughs> much higher. <laughs> but the friends and the network, um, the experience has proved invaluable. Mm -hmm. I can say uh, with still so much undone that in the years that I've lived, I'm so thankful mm -hmm. and I'm so appreciative uh, because. I've not made all of the great choices, mm -hmm. but notwithstanding, I'm still standing right. and still a work in progress. So, again, I say to our youth that life is about choices. Mm. You must choose ye this day. Choose the path. Now, for some, higher education may not be that path. The world of work. But I often say uh, to youth as I speak with them that, the opulent university of life will afford you so many different choices. And if something is not going well here, then try something else. Mm. Make good choices. And the best choice that you can ever, this is the best advice I've ever been given mm. by my mom. When she told me, she said, take the Lord with you wow. everywhere you go. So the best choice that our youth can make is to choose J-E-S-U-S. -S. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Was, was she a graduate, your mom? No. She was in that, that percentage that you indicated. She started, okay. but she didn't finish. And even today, I'm on her. I am trying to encourage her to go back. she was passionate about yes, education. Yes, she was passionate wow. about education. Wow. She was the first black uh, to be employed by the town of Arcadia. Uh, she has been a uh, poll watcher. She was appointed by several governors. Uh, she's done so many different things, notwithstanding, uh, but she was determined to ensure. You know, I, I can remember, I always tell, uh, just real quickly, the, the times in which we live, I would come home and try to tell her what teacher so-and-so or principal so-and-so did, and invariably she would always stop me. And the question was, what did you do? Okay. <laughs> and that's a little different from today. <laughs> and you were an only child. I am an only child, that's wow. correct. But like you said, there was a village around you. Oh, so, you so had many, cousins, so many, so nieces, many nephews. neighbors. Uh, when when I, when I was in school in the Ohio State University College of Law, I did a program in England. Oh. And it's so funny because this village, when I was over, you know, at Oxford, this program, I sent postcards to so many people, so many, <laughs> so many people. <laughs> and and when I got back. The, uh, the postal workers are like, man, <laughs> they just meant so much to me. Wow. You know, uh, wow. this lady I re relate to you and her sister, depending on if I'm in the paper, they would cut out wow. all of the, the news uh, clippings and what have you. So, again, it, I had a village. Mm -hmm. I had a village, and I still have a village. Individuals encouraging, wow. uh, in individuals praying for me, mm -hmm. uh, because you realize, uh, although you have this village, that you're not everyone's cup of tea. Yes, yes, yes. But you're thankful that you have so many others mm -hmm. who push us. And you mentioned me, uh, Arcadia, again, has produced so many doctors, lawyers. When I went to law school, oh. there were those before me, before you. you know, and they reached down to give me advice, to wow. encourage me. People like Joey Williams, you know, people like uh, Thelma Price, who also went to the Ohio State University oh. College of Law. Wow. You know, people who were there to ensure that the path was made clear and that. gave us an opportunity. And wow. even today, uh, we've had individuals uh, attended uh, Southern's graduation uh, mm -hmm. this year. My cousin just graduated with a Juris Doctorate. Wow. Uh, and there were so many from those little areas wow. like Arcadia, uh, Farmerville, Homer, you know, Gibsland, you know, Haynesville. Wow. So, We've done pretty well. Wow. I want you to give the youth listening, give us one 
experience in your youth that maybe cha changed or challenged the trajectory of your life? We hear stories of young boys, you know, in gangs or with a sexual escapade or, uh, and then they had a, on the road to Damascus experience or something that turned their life from the wrong way to the right way. Did you have that kind of experience or was yours just, you were always on the right track, you never? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about a Damascus experience, but I often say when I was in high school, uh, I advised, just uh, alluded to it a few minutes ago, uh, and sent a communique uh, to the office of the late Senator Russell B. Long, okay. uh, seeking to become a, a page. I'd seen this on television, uh, and I knew, you know, that those were political mm -hmm. uh, appointments, if you will. Uh, but I tried it, and I sent it to the representatives and our two senators. At the time, it was Jay Bennett Johnston and Senator Long. And Senator Long's office contacted me and I was the first from that area to have that opportunity and being in Washington DC oh wow sitting every day listening as US senators and representatives were discussing and debating things that was eye-opening what grade were you then I was a junior in high school wow. and it was truly my metamorphosis to say that this is what I want mm -hmm. I want to serve, I want to help. Now, whether I will get to Capitol Hill or not, I don't know, but it's been a great ride. But wow. that is when the yearning the vision and the crystallized vision. that summer. And, and today, like I said, I, I, I'm still in contact with a lot of uh, former pages, and it was wow. just, it was really a big change. Yeah. One of the greatest troubles we have in the youth is a lot of youth have this. Um, they, they, they tend to have pitfalls along the way that are stumbling blocks, and it almost stops them from pursuing. I mean, you know the correctional system and the, the criminal justice statistics in America. So many African-American young men have experienced the criminal justice system. What would you tell a young man how to avoid those stumbling blocks or pitfalls? I, I would say that you've had a meteoric rise and part of the reason could be that you sidestepped some of those stumbling blocks, if I may use that word. Well, you know. it, 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 life is, particularly today, it is difficult. But I would say make good choices. Associate yourself. My mother also impressed this upon mm. me with individuals, your partners, your friends, who are going where you're going in a different direction. Mm which is up with. Right. You know, it, it's important because there are so many temptations. Uh, violence is crisscrossing in uh, all of our societies and unfortunately has left terrible marks mm -hmm. in small town communities as well as big cities. So I would say to them, make good choices. When you don't know, ask for help. And Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, who was Dr. King's mentor, and president at Morehouse College. He said much, but he said, not failure is sin, but low aim is. Mm. And I think in many instances, and maybe I'll come back to, we can talk about this, we've given our youth so much that we have probably put them on a road that really now is very difficult because we didn't want them to experience the challenges, the disappointments mm. that we experience and people before us. So I, I, I just say to, to every youth, make good choices. And if you fall, get up. Because that's life. Invariably, whether you are an MD, PhD, ED, or JD, life is full of challenges. When you drove up a few minutes ago, uh, I had just gotten off the phone with a dear friend who was going through a very, very tough situation a young couple, and in my mind, I'm saying how unfair it is. Mm. But then there is this voice within me that says, just trust God. There is hope, right. There is hope. There is hope. You know, so I say make good choices. Now, you, 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 I wanted to bring this up, especially for the younger folks. Your father's, your relationship with your father, did it 
affect you growing up? Not me. Again, and, and I'll say this in this regard, um, my mother never uh, cast aspersions against my dad. To this day, uh, I would say we have a great relationship uh, with his family. I have been fortunate. Every opportunity, every graduation, I would always include them mm -hmm. because notwithstanding, you know, she did not want me to use that as an excuse, wow. but use it as a diving board, if you mm -hmm. will, to higher possibilities. So I say again to the youth, notwithstanding, because again, the village is secure. The village is there. Mm. There are deacons, there are pastors, there are teachers, and I'm so thankful for all of our teachers, particularly our male teachers who are mm. there every day, encouraging, trying to dispel different myths, mm. chastising them. So that's what made the difference for me. Wow. So no animosity, only love. Wow. And I mean, I just want to throw this out here. A lot of our current generation, it's almost like the spirit of entitlement, and they want to just regret, remorse. They want to build castles or monuments over things that have happened in the past. Yeah. But Patrick said something here. He said his mom never brought the past no. into his future. Yeah. She cast a vision and said, run, obtain overtake, recover all. You may have started from the, on a disadvantage, not having right. a father, but you right. don't have to remain you at don't a have disadvantage. To, you don't have to stay where you are. And another good friend once said to me, and I'll say to you, start where you are. Mm. Use what you have and do what you can. Mm. That's all anyone can be expected to do. Right. I can't use the great intellect that you have. I can't use the medium that you've been afforded. But I can use what I've been, what given. been given. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. And each of us, as I said a few minutes ago, have been given something, and it's incumbent upon us to use it to his glory. Well, we've been talking to Honorable Patrick Jefferson, the House Rep member for the District 11 in the state of Louisiana. We've had a great conversation talking about his pedigree, his family, and his background. He'll be back on the next show. He's going to be talking a bit more about democracy and his, his position and role in the government in the state of Louisiana and what he sees going forward in the future. You don't want to miss it. I want to invite you to any of our Holy Ghost Nights. Always holds last Friday of the month at the Oyo Hotel. It's 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. It's a powerful time in God's presence. We're going to be preaching, prophesying, praising God. It starts at 11 p.m. And we, get, we have guest ministers on every of those coming along. If you want to get more information, go to www.faithandpower.online. We'd love to see you. And to join us next time, for the same time on this show, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Awesome.